Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. With iCash slated for quarter two next year, let us hear why it's coming much later than we all really expected. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members who make these videos possible. If you do enjoy my content and would like to support the channel even further from as little as $1 a month, all of the links are in the description below. So someone over on Spectrum asked the question, what happened with iCash? Quoting Chad McKenney, who is a lead gameplay engineer, heavily working on iCash, stating in May that he expects iCash and Global Persistence Tier 1 to land by the end of the year. Well, Chad himself came on to reply and shed some light, and I will say that Chad is someone who responds on Spectrum often with great thorough answers, which I'm sure we all appreciate. So a big thank you to Chad. Anyway, he begins by explaining that he was somewhat optimistic, but it was indeed the reflection of the current predicted state for iCash. He does say he probably shouldn't have said anything remotely close to date, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree with that, but personally, I'm grateful for any estimate we get, as it does give us kind of an idea of how well things are going, but I do understand that things change, priorities shift, and, you know, more work can always arrive. So he mentions there was a few reasons why it slipped to quarter two compared to the end of the year sort of rough estimate. Number one, they discovered that there was some additional work that needed along the way in order to both deliver on the goals of iCash Global Persistence while also setting them up for server meshing. He says they have filled out more of the design of iCash to scale better by allowing them to query on data in a way that leverages the shard aggregation of the data. And additionally, they have laid out some more plans to deal with some inventory work to set them up for planned features like the separation of players and characters needed for the death of a spaceman mechanic and to support additional design asks for things like physical inventory and cargo, plus a lot more. Now, when he talks about the character separation, I believe it's referring to the ability to create more than one character on the same account one of them to act as a beneficiary to take over your assets should your main character die. He does mention that they're not saying that once iCash is implemented, they will be able to split between characters and players. It is more just laying the groundwork to make it possible. They still have a lot of work on the back end to do like service level interfaces and a lot of the code will have to change, but it's worth doing now so they're ready for when it does happen. Secondly, some resources were taking off iCash to work on things like long-term persistence, implementation and support, and some vital internal engine work to support the team, which hasn't been a huge amount, but they did impact the schedule nonetheless. So long-term persistence is something we do need now with having a playable alpha. It does kind of give us the ability to record things like ships and items we've bought, which I'm quite happy for, you know, that to be in first. And thirdly, they increased the amount of internal testing they are planning for the feature set and increased the amount of time dedicated to tooling for debugging so they have more confidence it goes smoothly for the initial live release. He does say that this is an incredible deep set of changes to the game and the back end and rushing it out is of no benefit to anyone. The iCash service fleet is largely done and most of the work is focused on integrating it into the game engine and updating all of the game systems accordingly. So firstly, thank you, Chad, for sharing that information. Everything he goes into makes perfect sense to me. Expanding on its capabilities and features to get a more complete system, I think is a great idea and increasing internal testing so it isn't a complete mess when it does release. It will be a massive benefit to all of us, reducing any teething problems that there might be when it does roll out. It is always a big shame when things get pushed, but if they could accompany these pushbacks or setbacks with a response like this, I think many wouldn't feel so disheartened by it. Chad's explanation was clear and I'm sure that when it does come, it'll be more than worth the wait as it touches so many other areas. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out to you. It was posted on the Spectrum. I have linked everything below should you want to read into that yourself. And I think a lot of people were hoping to hear something along the lines as an explanation. Anyway, do make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are fast approaching 30,000 subscribers and we will be doing a star and a giveaway when that becomes available after reaching that 30k. If you want to be notified when my videos go live, tick that notification bell. And if you can do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Also, be sure to come and hang out over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan, where we'll be talking more about this and playing some 311. Thank you again to my patrons and channel members for all of your support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.